Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2017 Subaru Crosstrek, we're going to be showing you how to install the Roadmaster base plate kit with removable arms. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this is something that's going to work for you. So before we start actually checking out the base plate and really going over that, I figured it'd be useful just to refresh ourselves on the main components that we're gonna to need to flat tow our Subaru down the road in the first place. There's gonna be a total of five that we're gonna need. The first one's gonna be our base plate, and what that's gonna do is provide us with a, uh, a solid and reliable connection point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. That tow bar is gonna be the second component, and this is gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of your Subaru to the back of your motorhome. The third main component will be safety cables, and these are pretty straightforward. Uh, these are just there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. They're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main component is going to be your tow bar wiring, and what that's gonna do is transfer the lighting functions from the back of your coach to the back of your Subaru, uh, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component is going to be a supplemental braking system. And what this is gonna do is hit the brakes in your cross track whenever you hit the brakes in your RV, uh, helping to bring you to a complete and more predictable stop. So this is what the front of your Subaru is gonna look like whenever uh, you're not towing it behind your motorhome. And honestly, I don't think it looks too bad. You know, for, uh, for what it is, it does a pretty good job of kind of blending in. Uh, Everything kind of sits back a little bit, but it's still easy to get to. And with this one here, at least on our fascia, we, rare, we barely had to cut uh, hardly any material out, which, which is nice. You know, you don't have to chop up the front end of your car. So a couple little cuts here and there, and uh, everything went back together really nice and, and fits nice and tight. Whenever you are ready to hook up, you're gonna have these removable arms. And the way these work is they'll slide into the base plate, and you'll turn it until it uh, kind of clicks into position. So same deal with the other side. One thing I do want to mention <clears throat> is the fact that since this is a crossbar style base plate kit, um, what that means is you're gonna have a crossbar that runs across here and the base plate doesn't come with that crossbar. And even a lot of the tow bars now don't come included with that. So that is something you will have to pick up separately and that's what these pieces are here. So the base plate will have the removable arms but not these pieces. And so these pieces, you'll, you'll bolt to it and then that'll allow your crossbar to kind of drop into place. So here's that crossbar and the way this is gonna work, just gonna line it up until it locks in and then you're gonna take your pins and put them in and those are going to prevent it from coming up and coming undone and everything else and then once you have it like this at this point you're ready to hook your tow bar up to it you're going to take the end of your tow bar this uh, style here is going to work with the roadmaster type tow bars and uh, chances are good too if you have another brand you can get an adapter that'll line up with this but you're just going to take the end take your pin feed it through and lock it down. And then of course, get the rest of your things set up like your wiring and your braking system and your safety cables. The safety cables on this are kind of tight, um, just kind of how the base plate sits, but not really a huge deal. It would be nice if they're a little more open, but you know, it's still manageable and uh, definitely not super hard to do. So this is what your setup can look like whenever uh, you are flat towing your Subaru behind your motorhome. And I think it's a really nice setup actually. It's clean, uh, organized, and pretty easy to work with, which is definitely important. Um, honestly, on this particular vehicle, I kind of like the crossbar. Um, and that's because it raises the attachment point up a little bit higher. And so that's gonna really help make things nice and level with the back of your motorhome and, and allow your tow bar to uh, have a good chance of being uh, level without using a high-low adapter. And also because it raises everything up, it makes everything else pretty easy to get to. You know, our safety chains are in the open, um, our, our braking system, um, 
breakaway switch is open and easy to get to, and the same thing with their wiring. Compared to the other base plate available, which is a Blue Ox, um, honestly, I really want to have a, a major preference or really lean towards one or the other. Um, they look about the same in terms of the appearance and how it's going to look on the front of your car. With this one, though, the, the one thing that kind of separates it, and like I said, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of in this particular case, is the crossbar and it bringing the attachment point higher up off the ground. Uh, I think that's a good idea with, with this particular vehicle. But other than that, um, you know, it's going to get the job done, let you hook all your other components up and, and enjoy yourself whenever you're uh, trying to flat tow down the road. But as far as the installation goes, uh, it wasn't too bad. I've done base plates that are a lot more challenging and some that are a little bit easier. So it kind of falls in the middle there, but it's definitely doable. Um, you are going to have to remove your front fascia. Don't really let that intimidate you though. Um, it's only a handful of fasteners and these Subarus come apart pretty easy when it comes to taking the fascias off. So, um, you know, as long as you stay focused and, and pay attention, it really shouldn't give you too many issues. But speaking of that, why don't we go ahead and pull into the garage and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the front of our Subaru and we're gonna to need to remove the front fascia. That way we can uh, have the space we need to get our base plate on. And so to start, we're gonna have a total of six plastic push pin fasteners along this front edge, three on each side. So here's the three fasteners. And to get these out, you can use a flathead screwdriver or even a trim tool, uh, whichever one's easier. But you're gonna pry underneath the head, then pull that whole base out. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing to get the others out. And I wanna mention, Anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we're also gonna to do to the other side because it'll be set up the exact same way. Now if we move to our front wheel wells, uh, we're gonna have a fastener up here at the top that we need to get out. And I wanna mention, you probably see this blue tape here. I just put this here along the edges just to help protect from scratching and stuff when we actually pull the fascia off. But with that said, with these, you're gonna push down on the center of it so it'll kinda pop in. And then you can take a screwdriver and work that fastener out. Now underneath the front of our vehicle, we're gonna have a total of eight push pin type fasteners that we need to pull out. So four on each side. Here's gonna be three of them. And just like the others, to get these out, just gonna pry down on the head and pull them on out. Sometimes these can be a little difficult. This is, with this style, this is where the trim tool really helps. These kind of just get gunked up with dirt and stuff and kind of can be kind of tight sometimes. And then the other one is going to be kind of towards the center. So this one here, we'll do the same deal. While we're under here, uh, if your vehicle has fog lights, you may as well disconnect them. Take this panel and just kind of pull it down out of the way. There's gonna be the fog light there. You can push on this tab here. And when you push that down, you're able to uh, separate that connector. Now with the next set of hands, you can remove the fascia and you're just gonna start at the corner, kind of pull out and that's gonna release the clips. We're just going to work our way around, and these Subarus actually come apart real easy, but with it released, we can set it off to the side somewhere safe. With the fascia off, now we can actually remove the bumper beam, and so each side of it, you're going to have four 12 millimeter head bolts, so we'll go ahead and grab our socket and pull those off. So I got the other ones removed already, so we should be able to kind of pull out like this and lift up. That'll release it and we can get it removed as we won't be reinstalling it. 
Over on the passenger side of our vehicle, we're gonna have this electrical sensor held in place by one 10 millimeter bolt. We need to remove this. Um, some models, it'll be over here. Other models, it'll be over on the driver's side. Either way, it needs to be removed. So if you don't see anything on the passenger, check on the driver and, and pull it off. But take my 10 millimeter and pull it out and kind of just let it hang, hang out of the way for now. So if we look right here where our sensor was, we're gonna have a plastic uh, fastener and we need to pull that out like this. And then this little piece here where it kind of bends up, I'm gonna take a pair of pliers and just straighten it out, get it flat. And what we're gonna do is reinstall this sensor uh, upside down or as best we can. So we can get it like that, put the bolt back in and, and re-secure it. Now on the driver's side, we need to identify what type of washer fluid reservoir bottle we have. So um, there's a couple different styles. If yours looks like this, you can follow along what we're about to do. Uh, with this style, we're gonna to have to remove kind of some of our splash shielding underneath. If yours looks different, um, you'll have to refer to your instructions. There's some additional bracing here uh, that may need to be removed and you might have to pull your headlight out and a couple of other small things. But uh, once you identify that, you can, uh, uh, you know, figure out what to do next. So in our case, we'll get the car up in the air a little bit and remove some of the splash shields. So to get this splash shield off, we're gonna have a handful of fasteners. Kinda in this area, we're gonna have three pushpin types. One of them will be here. So we'll pop that off. Then the other two are gonna be kinda right behind it uh, up here in this area. So on this side, we have one here and then one pretty high up. But we'll do the same thing to get those removed. So on the bottom, on each side, we're gonna have a total of four bolts, so two on each side. One here, we'll use a 12 millimeter. And then one here, it's also a 12. Let's get that one pulled out. Should allow us to lower our Splash shield down and get it out of the way. Upon further inspection over here on the driver's side, I realized we do indeed actually have that extra framing, which this is what it looks like here. Uh, so we are gonna have to pull our headlight out. Not really a big deal. That way we can get access to a bolt later on. Um, but with that said, we're gonna have five 10 millimeter bolts that we need to start on. Uh, we're gonna have one here. And then on this side, we're gonna have two more. And then one here in the middle. And one way up top here. And it also looks like might have to pull out this push pin fastener too. I think that's connected as well. So we'll just pull that out. And from the looks of it, we should be able to pull this out here. So start to maneuver that. And it actually looks like over here, we may have another push pin too. It feels like it, that's kind of hanging us up. So we'll get this one out. This should do it. If not, we'll keep working our way around until we uh, find the culprit. But still, for whatever reason, feels like it's wanting to hang up. Definitely don't want to force it. All right, so there's the locking strip. So that actually just popped out. So we'll set that to the side. And that should be the only thing holding our headlight in still, which it was. 
And now that we have it free, we'll disconnect it. Push on that connector there. And then it looks like we're gonna have another big connector here. So, I wanna do that. And set everything off to the side. Now we can take these support pieces and get these bolted in. So they're gonna sit something like this. Uh, before you do that, let's get our hardware ready. So you're gonna take this half inch bolt, put on a split lock washer and a flat washer. And what I like to do, sometimes paint can get like kind of hung up in the threads here and make it hard to get started. So just run your bolt through each end of it. Make sure it's clean and, and threads in easily. But with that said, we're gonna take some red Loctite put it on the threads of the bolt. And matter of fact, all of the hardware that we're gonna use to secure the base plate, uh, it's gonna receive some red Loctite and grab that here at each trailer. Take some lead off, you don't need to go that heavy on it. But uh, what we're gonna do, take your bolt, put that through. We'll get this uh, started, your hand tight. And what we're looking for is when we tighten this down, we want this to try to set flush, as flush as possible uh, with, the, with the frame there. If it doesn't, not really a big deal. We can tighten it down and we can always kind of come back with a hammer and tap it in a little bit if need be. So I'll hold this as straight as I can, then come back with a 19 or a 3 quarter inch socket. and snug it down. So this does come out just a hair past the flange here. And so I'm just gonna give a, uh, get a hammer and give it a little tappy until it sits a little more flush. Now we can take our main receiver brace and some of the holes in it are gonna line up with the original bumper beam holes. And you're gonna take these bolts with a split lock washer and a flat washer. Don't forget your Loctite. But we're gonna put this up. And I think what I'm gonna do is just get one started on each side. That way this will support itself and we can come back and work on the rest of the bolts. So with it supporting itself, we'll go ahead and just get that same hardware combination started on the three remaining holes. And for now, like I said, you just wanna keep these hand tight. Now if you look on our base plate, this hole here is gonna line up with that little support brace deal that we put inside of there. And you're gonna take this half inch bolt, split lock washer, flat washer, Loctite, get that started. Chains are pretty good. It's not gonna line up perfectly, um, allowing you to get it started. So if that's the case, I like to use a tool like this and kind of just put that in there and pry on it to help kind of center everything. And that'll make it a lot easier to get things going, just to kind of bend it back in shape. If it feels like it wants to start. So we'll get this started. and get it, uh, get it hand tight. Now we're able to just snug all the hardware down. For this one, I'm gonna use a 19 or a three quarter. And for all these, I'm gonna use a 13. With these, I like to kind of do an X pattern just to help kind of draw everything in evenly. Over here, just on the driver's side, if we look on the back side of our frame rail, uh, we're gonna have some wire loom here and we need to, to remove it out of the way. That way, uh, eventually we're gonna drill through here and put a bolt and we don't wanna hit that. So, just take our trim tool, kinda pop that out of the way. 
And then that will allow us to uh, kind of push it up and out of the way when we're drilling. Before we start drilling, because we're going to use the base plate as a template and the drill bit's going to come right through this area, what I did is just took a block of wood, kind of jammed it up in there. That way not only it'll help pull our wiring away and, and everything else, but once the drill bit comes through, uh, it'll just hit the wood and we don't have to worry about it shooting all the way through and damaging our wiring or another component. So we're going to take our drill bit, run through, and we want to try to get this as straight as possible. And like I said, just be careful, be deliberate and everything else because uh, we don't want to get too crazy drilling all the way through. It's pretty thin metal, so it's going to take too long. Pull the black wood out. Now you can see it goes all the way through. Passenger side set up the same way, except over here, you're not gonna have to worry about drilling. There's a hole already there. What you're gonna do is take this long bolt, put your Loctite on, feed that through, and then it's gonna come out over here. And you're gonna take this big circle washer, put that over the end of the bolt, followed by a split lock washer and then a hex nut. We'll go ahead and get this started. And while we're right here, we can snug it down. So I'm gonna use a 19 millimeter on the head of the bolt and a wrench to hold the nut and snug it down. Now we need to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all of the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can grab one here at E-Trailer, or a lot of times you go to your local auto parts stores and they'll have one there available uh, to rent. Now at this point, it would be a great opportunity to install some of your other flat towing components like tow bar wiring and a braking system. And I say that because with the fascia off, uh, we just have a lot more room to work. It makes uh, installing those other components a little bit easier. <clears throat> and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, once I have all those on, um, we're going to hold our fascia, make sure it clears. We may have to, to cut some uh, access holes out to let our base plate pass through um, and uh, you know once we get to that point we'll show you how I did it. If you're not installing those components already have them in place at this point you would cut your fascia and simply reinstall it the opposite way that you removed it. Now at the next set of hands you can take our fascia and put it on. I kind of eyeballed it and it looks like we might not even need to cut anything or trim anything so we'll see if that's the case. Don't forget to plug your lights back in. And then we can kind of just start to carefully work our fascia in, in place here. If we do need to trim, I don't think it's a huge deal. Uh, we can probably just kind of hold it like this and it looks like maybe we'll have to cut a spot off here. So uh, I might grab a pair of snips and, and do that now. So let's cut out some small openings here and see if it fits. And it looks like it will. So uh, when it comes to trimming, I like to take off as little as possible because we can always come back and cut more. So we'll do the other side and, and see if everything slides into place. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster crossbar style base plate kit with removable arms on our 2017 Subaru Crosstrek.